Miles and Huberman in their seminal book uh, that is titled Qualitative Data Analysis um, presented a systematic framework or approach to qualitative data analysis. And so they generally described this approach to qualitative data analysis into three uh, concurrent uh, steps. They are not in entirely exclusive steps, but they are concurrent. Um, and so these steps include data reduction, data display, and conclusion drawing or verification. We will briefly discuss these one by one. So the first one, data reduction, what is it? This is the step or the stage of qualitative data analysis where the data is generally, qualitative data is generally reduced. So as we know that uh, generally qualitative researchers collect a lot of data um, and that is generally unstructured, uh, generally textual or in the form of, of videos or audios. So the preparation of the data, the simplification of the data, uh, but at the same time taking care that the essence of the data or the richness of the qualitative data is not lost. So this reduction generally involves the process of selecting um, chunks of data, focusing data, and transforming raw data. Uh, such as data in, um, in a text form from, uh, into manageable forms for further analysis. So before we actually do the, 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 uh, the systematic analysis of the data, the proper analysis of the data, the first thing is that we need to prepare data for that analysis. And reduction uh, stage is an important stage towards that end. During this stage, generally there is the process of summarizing of data where the key points are identified, the themes are generally the beginning, um, understanding related to the themes that are coming, that are possibly coming out of the data or the patterns. Secondly, at this stage there is a bit of classification um, of, the, of similar data into certain categories or themes. Uh, based on their common characteristics. The other thing that we need to do at the reduction stage is selecting of the relevant data and generally discarding um, or reducing data that is, that is not very, that we do not see as very relevant um, or that we see is redundant or uh, a kind of repetitive uh, information that is not needed. Uh, then transforming is the, uh, the last uh, stage, uh, the first stage. And so transformation of data is actually, for example, in many cases in qualitative research, we collect data through interviews, so we need to, trans, uh, to transcribe that. So transcriptions, field notes. Um, and so we need to do the transformation in order to uh, make to turn the data into a format that is suitable for analysis, so such as turning it into codes for further analysis. So that's the first uh, stage uh, of the data analysis, the data reduction. The second stage then, the data display stage, is the stage where there is organ organization uh, so this process, the data display process, involves organizing data and visually representing, generally visually representing data uh, to reduce the data in order to facilitate further analysis of the data. So what happens at this stage is that there are certain uh, uh, sub-steps that are involved in the process of display. And so during display, the first thing is that we need to, uh, to do certain things such as organizing data into categories or themes. <clears throat> and generally this happens in the form of, of, uh, of matrices um, and, and, and in the form of, for example, tabular representation of the data. The second thing that happens at this stage is developing charts or graphs. So in, in many cases, um, 
we need to illustrate the patterns, the trends in our data, such as, for example, if we have conducted interviews with several participants, and so now we need to see the patterns um, that, that, uh, that possibly occur when we are analyzing the data. And so we also see certain trends um, in our data, in our qualitative data. We, we also see certain relationships. And so those patterns, trends, and relationships um, need to be clearly represented uh, so that we can, can actually visibly see the relationship, the, the, the points of integration or disintegration among the data. So at that stage, we need uh, the use of charts and graphs. And similarly, developing uh, diagrams or maps. So in, in, this is also a very useful strategy for visualizing our data, for indicating, for, for showing our data in a clearly comprehensible formats. So generally, visual depiction of, the, of complex concepts um, that are presented in, for example, textual form or, for example, in, in, in audio form. Uh, so this is something the, the diagrams or maps help us in depicting the complex concepts into processes or relationships. And lastly, at this stage, we need to present data in tabular format. So again, um, at this stage, what happens is that uh, in order to compare and contrast different sets of data or different themes that are coming out of our data, different aspects and dimensions of the data we need to present that in tabular form. So this, the, the presentation of data, for example, related to certain objectives and questions need to be presented in tabular form in order to compare data, to compare our findings and to contrast, to see similarities, to see differences. So the second stage, the display stage is basically aimed at helping the researchers seeing the data and the the, the outcomes of the data in visual form. And so this, uh, and this happens through the developing creation of matrices, developing charts and graphs, developing diagrams and maps, and presenting data in tabular forms. There could be other things that uh, one can do at this stage in order to display data. Last stage, or the last step that they suggest is drawing conclusions or verification. So on the basis of, so we have already um, selected our data, we have organized data, we have compared and contrasted our data in the light of our research and our objectives. Now this is, now here is the time to have a critical look at in the overall picture of the data so that we can draw conclusions from our data in the form of findings, in the form of conclusions, and in the form of of implications in the light of our previous knowledge or, our, our, or, um, or in the light of uh, theoretical conceptual background. So conclusion drawing is basically the process of synthesizing the whole thing. Now, you have the whole data picture in detail. You have critically looked at it. You have compared, contrasted, analyzed, and so Keeping in view that we need to synthesize the findings from the data reduction stage, the data display stage. And so there are three things that happen at this stage. We, need, we are able to generate insights into our findings and into our data. We uh, begin interpreting our data in the light of its theoretical and conceptual background and in the light of our research objectives and ultimately uh, this uh, helps us in, uh, in building, in developing conclusions or getting to our conclusions. This process generally is a process of pattern matching. So as you know that we have already uh, discussed the, the, the patterns come out during the second, the first and especially the second stage, the data display stage. The patterns are visible. Here we are comparing the findings 
with existing theories. So we have our findings, now we need to match our patterns that are coming out of our findings to the existing theories or previous literature, the concepts or frameworks. And we need to identify patterns or discrepancies. So where our findings or our data is supporting previous studies and where it is going the other way around. Explanation building is the other process at this stage where uh, there is a process of constructing explanations or narratives that are aimed at making sense of the data. So the overall sense of the data and the provision of a comprehensible interpretation of the findings. So as the researchers have background knowledge and they have knowledge of the data that they have collected, now they are able to make comprehensible interpretations in order to present data to the, uh, to the readers. The last stage is cross-case analysis where the researchers at this stage, at the conclusion or verification stage, is um, working at an analysis of the main findings and the conclusions for similarities and differences across cases where data is coming from more than one cases. For example, interview data um, is generally, uh, there are several participants or several sites or several cases uh, where we get our interviews, our interview data uh, from. And so there is need for an, an analysis across these cases or acro across different sources of the data that we have collected data from in order to respond to our research objectives and questions. So analysis of similarities, possible similarities and possible differences across cases or sources um, is very helpful full in terms of identifying overarching themes or, or trends across the whole of data um, in the light of our research objectives and research questions. So these are three very important and very clear steps um, that uh, uh, Miles and Huberman have suggested um, in terms of uh, qualitative data analysis. And so here are some other sources that uh, you can have a look at for further understanding the process of qualitative data analysis in general and the systematic qualitative data analysis in particular.